In the distant past, our ancestors relied on hunting and gathering for sustenance. We transitioned to agriculture on land, which helped feed the world's population for centuries. But today, there simply isn't enough land to feed everyone over the next 30 years. We need to do the same thing in the ocean. Enter sustainable 3D ocean farming, a revolutionary approach that combines elements of mariculture with innovative technology. This groundbreaking method heralds a new era of responsible seafood production, transforming the way we utilize our oceans for offering a sustainable solution to feed our ever expanding population. Join me as we literally dive into the world of 3D ocean farming and explore its immense potential to reshape the future of aquaculture. I'm Ricky, and this is Two Bed Division. This video is sponsored by Atmo. The Blue Revolution is a beacon of hope, promising a transformative shift in the way we harness the ocean's bountiful resources. It's all about switching from being hunter-gatherers in the oceans to farming the ocean instead. To give you a sneak peek of what's coming up, farming just 5% of America's waters would produce enough food to feed the world without using a single drop of fresh water or nutrient input. Don't believe me? Well, keep watching, and I think you might. Now, when you've heard about aquaculture in the past, I bet you're probably thinking, this guy's talking about fish farms, and you've probably saw flashes of destroyed coastal ecosystems, dead zones, and whatnot. But I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about the ocean equivalent to organic farming, a type of aquaculture, or agriculture, in water. With its innovative design, this sustainable mariculture approach not only revives the once depleted marine ecosystem, but also ushers in a new era of aquatic agriculture. So let's put things into context. There are almost 8 billion people in the world today, and that is set to increase to 10 billion by around 2057. That means that we'll need to feed over 2 billion new mouths in the next 20 to 35 years. While farming and intensive agriculture help get us here, we've reached the limits of how much food we can grow on land. The problem is is that there simply isn't enough arable land to feed such a fast growing population. Only 29%, which is less than a third of the world's surface is covered in land, and 71% of which is habitable land. Of that 71%, 46% or almost half is farmland, while most of the rest is covered in forest. We're already at the point where we can't expand the available farmland without destroying invaluable forests, which is why our use of land for agriculture, which has been growing over time, has almost plateaued in the last few decades. But regardless, the population has kept on growing. As a consequence, the amount of agriculture land per person has actually steadily been declining over the years. What all this means is that there is less and less agricultural land available to feed each person as time goes by. The only ways to increase it would be to tap into new forest to make land more productive or to change our diet since over three quarters of farmland is currently used to grow livestock for meat and dairy products. To be fair, land productivity has also increased over time. But the fact is that there's a limit to how much more food we can produce on land. And people are already going hungry today. So we need to find a solution and fast. I already made a video about one possible solution to this problem using something called precision fermentation to make proteins cheaply and with much higher yields than farming. I suggest you check that out after this video. It's really cool. Making milk without cows? What's not to love? But ocean farming is even more promising since it helps us tap into an almost unlimited potential that covers 71% of the Earth's surface in a perfectly sustainable way. So let's talk aquaculture. Aquaculture is actually the fastest growing food sector in the world, averaging 5.8% annual growth rate since 2010, according to the UN Food and Agricultural Organization. This is over four times higher than the projected average of just 1.3% for the agricultural sector as a whole. In fact, it's growing so fast that traditional fish farming overtook commercial fishing in 2013. So we eat more farm fish today than wild caught. One of the great pleasures of making these videos is all the research we get to do on really cool topics. For instance, we've done two videos on fires in Maui in Canada, and it's got me thinking about air quality in a whole new way. And I gotta tell you about our sponsor this week, Atmo, and this, the Atmo Tube Pro. This amazing little device is a game changer for understanding the air quality around you in real time. The Atmo 2 Pro detects a range of pollutants from volatile organic compounds, VOCs like paint and gases, to particulate matter PM1, PM2.5, and PM10, pollutants such as dust and pollen. And to get a perspective of just how small that is, here's what they look like compared to a grain of sand. It is so small and light, you can clip it to your belt or backpack and check air quality in real time wherever you go. It even measures temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure. I took it with me on a recent trip to the fully charged live show in Vancouver, and luckily air quality was good. But that data is powerful. 
With the Atmo 2 Pro, you can set personalized alerts for specific air quality standards to get notifications if the quality drops below those levels. What could be more important than protecting our families, the food we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe? Get up to 30% off the Atmo 2 Pro until September 23rd. Check it out today. Links in the description. Huge thanks to Atmo and you for supporting the show. Fish farming works pretty much like any other form of livestock farming. You choose a species to farm, say salmon or carp. Then you breed and hatch little fish called fry and transfer them to tanks and ponds where you feed and care for them as they get older. These tanks or ponds can either be on land or in natural bodies of water like rivers, lakes, or the ocean. Once they're big enough, you just harvest them with nets or other methods and you're done. Fish farming is actually pretty great compared to farming on land. The biggest benefit is that fish have a much better feed conversion rate or FCR. This means they require much less feed to produce the same amount of protein as say cattle or even poultry because they don't need to make a heavy bone structure since they float in the water or spend a lot of energy regulating their temperatures since they're cold blooded. It takes close to one pound of feed to produce one pound of salmon on a typical fish farm, whereas it'll take anywhere from 10 to 18 pounds of feed to produce each pound of beef, five pounds for pork, 2.5 pounds for chicken. Farm fish isn't the king of feed conversion rate. There's actually something even better, which we'll get to in a minute. Aquaculture also produces fewer emissions than agriculture and traditional farming. Farm salmon has a carbon footprint of seven pounds of CO2 equivalent per pound of fish, while the beef industry produces close to a hundred pounds of CO2 per pound of meat. Finally, fish farming, when done correctly, can significantly boost food production, providing a reliable source of protein to meet the growing global demand. But traditional aquaculture or fish farming has several challenges. The most important are, fish farming also contributes to water pollution. Waste materials including uneaten feed, fish poop, and chemicals such as antibiotics and pesticides are released directly into the water. This can lead to eutrophication or the excessive nutrient enrichment of aquatic systems that causes harmful algae blooms, depleting oxygen, and creating dead zones. In some cases, fish farming operations are established in ecologically sensitive areas such as mangroves and coastal wetlands. The construction and operation of these farms can lead to habitat destruction, endangering local species, and reducing the overall biodiversity of the marine ecosystem. But the biggest contradiction behind traditional fish farming is the feed. You see, fish feed or fin fish like salmon and carp is made with, wait for it, other fish. You think, hey, no biggie, we just use the entrails and waste of fish we eat. But that's not the case. A study found that the estimated 71% of fish meal and 73.9% of fish oil used to make feed for farm fish are made from wild catch, with only about a quarter coming from aquatic animal processing waste. In fact, about a third of all wild caught fish is processed to make fish feed for fish farms. So this basically relies on the very thing it's trying to replace, making it unsustainable at best. Most of these drawbacks, except for the feed, can be fixed by moving fish farms to the open ocean, something large companies like Salmar are already doing. But the big blue revolution can fix all of that. It's called 3D farming, because unlike a farm over land, which only uses surface area, two dimensions, new ocean farms also use the vertical dimension or the entire water column below the surface to grow restorative species like seaweed and shellfish. 3D ocean farming was invented by longtime fisherman Bren Smith. The farming structure typically consists of horizontal ropes suspended in the water, anchored to the ocean floor, with floating buoys at the surface to provide support and stability. Seaweed, kelp, and other types of algae are grown on these ropes while shellfish like mussels, oysters, and scallops are cultivated in cages or mesh bags attached to the same ropes or on the sea floor. The system takes advantage of the natural water currents and sunlight to provide nutrients and energy for the organisms to grow, so it doesn't need any inputs at all. This means that its feed conversion rate essentially zero, null, zip, zilch, nada. Everything comes from the sea. You just plant it, care for it, and then harvest it. 3D ocean farming offers so many benefits that really it sounds too good to be true. I had trouble ranking them all, so here are just the top three. Number one, high yield. By using the vertical water column, it makes for much better use of the available surface area of the ocean, allowing us to grow way more proteins per acre than on land. According to Bren Smith, farming just 5% of US waters could produce the protein equivalent to three trillion cheeseburgers per year. I don't think you're gonna get ground beef special sauce, sesame patty bun, but that's something. That happens to be enough to feed the entire world population of 8 billion people with a cheeseburger equivalent every single day. Who knew? 
The next big thing is that since it's already in the oceans, these farms require zero fresh water input, whereas farming on land takes 70% of all the water we consume every year. So ocean farms could finally solve our global water crisis as well. The next big thing about these farms is their environmental impact. Growing seaweed helps turn carbon into biomass, sucking out tons of carbon from the ocean and helping reduce acidification. Some people are also proposing these seaweed farms as a way to sequester carbon by sinking the kelp or algae to the bottom of the ocean once fully grown. But algae also sucks up other nutrients like nitrogen and phosphates, combating eutrophication and bringing life back to dead zones killed by harmful algae blooms in the past. Additionally, shellfish like clams and oysters eat by filtering water and removing particular organic matter like fish poop and even phytoplankton, effectively cleaning the water from debris, waste, and potentially harmful algae. A single oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day. So imagine how much water a whole farm with hundreds of thousands of oysters would filter. But one thing I like most about this whole idea is how easy it is to get started and the fact that anyone could become economically independent while feeding the world and cleaning the oceans. Brent Smith started a nonprofit called Green Wave to teach people how to do just that. According to Smith, this business idea has a very low barrier to entry as it takes only $20,000 to $50,000 US to start a 20 acre farm. The estimated minimum you'd need to be profitable plus a couple of grand on the side to buy a small boat. But how profitable would such a farm be? Turns out very, very profitable. Depending on the location, the typical 3D farm can produce around 10 tons of seaweed and 150,000 shellfish per acre per year. Based on this production, Smith claims to make about $10,000 plus $5,000 per acre annually from selling shellfish. So the 20 acre farm will gross around $300,000 annually, half of which goes to operational costs, netting about $150,000 per year. Not bad at all. This goes to show that this is a profitable venture and many people and companies have gotten to work, including some private ventures like C6 Energy, which produces biofuels and bioplastics from algae farmed in the ocean. So what's the catch? Why aren't these farms absolutely everywhere? Well, they actually are almost everywhere, particularly in China and Southeast Asia, just not here in the US. You see, 3D ocean farming has three major obstacles to overcome in America. The biggest challenge is by far consumer demand. Many people are not yet accustomed to eating kelp-based dishes, and most Americans don't even like or frequently eat shellfish either, which is crazy because they're delicious. Paella, anyone? We need to get people eating seaweed and shellfish because without demand, no one's gonna invest in these alternative waterborne food crops, even if they do show immense potential for other uses beside food. If we keep demanding beef, the beef industry will always thrive and outshine better alternatives. But at the same time, I get it. A, a good burger or a steak is hard to replace. Maybe we just work in more of these alternatives into our meals a couple times a week. A little goes a long way. Another challenge is a need for investment and infrastructure to support the growth and distribution of 3D ocean farms. Building and maintaining ocean farms requires funding and resources, and many coastal communities may lack the necessary capital. Finally, and this is probably the most important obstacle, we have policies and policy makers. 3D ocean farming faces several regulatory hurdles that hinder its growth and expansion. One of the main challenges is the complex and time-consuming permit process. As seen in Washington state, where only one seaweed farm is operational despite growing interest. The existing regulatory framework often involves jumping through multiple hoops with different agencies and jurisdictions, leading to delays and confusion for potential ocean farmers. Another issue is the lack of clear guidelines and policies specifically tailored for 3D ocean farming, which includes the cultivation of restorative species like seaweed and shellfish. Currently, regulations are primarily designed for traditional aquaculture practices and don't adequately address the unique aspects of this innovative farming system. Despite these challenges, organizations like GreenWave are working to provide training and financial support to aspiring ocean farmers, which could help expand the adoption of 3D ocean farming in the future. But we need to do our part and spread awareness among our friends, family, and colleagues about solutions like these, and to put pressure on policymakers to make it easier to start these farms, since the US is decades behind the rest of the world when it comes to ocean farming. Now, as usual, I want to know what you guys think. What do you think about the future of food? Would you eat more food grown from the ocean, a higher kelp and seaweed diet, or more fish, more shellfish, more oysters. What do you think? It's a really tough thing. The hardest thing is changing consumer habits. People who love a good hamburger or steak 
are not gonna be all that keen, but it'll take new, unique, innovative chefs and new culinary styles and techniques to really push some of these ideas forward. But as you can see, it's almost a net zero result. Plus we'd be cleaning the ocean. Really amazing stuff. Now, if that all sounds too good to be true and pretty amazing and exciting, you gotta check out this video next.